Hey guys, Skilliard here with a quick overview of the patch notes for the Black Desert Online second closed beta as well as the cash shop information that has been released. Uh, the reason I'm making this video is because there's some people that have not yet played Black Desert and might not understand some of the changes that have been made or the impact that some of the cash shop items may have. So I'm going to help explain those and just kind of go over the whole patch notes that have been released. So, uh, so supposedly they came out with a voiceover, so you might have, you know, English voices. Um, it's not very clear if it's going to be in more than just English or if they're going to have it in French and other languages such as German. Uh, not really clear yet. We'll have to wait and see when the servers come up at around 2 a.m. Central tonight. Um, apparently you get a full skill reset at level 45 that's temporarily. Um, I kind of like that they're doing this because when you're leveling, you know, you might just be throwing skill points into your abilities, you know, not really thinking about it, and then you might end up regretting it later. So by getting this, you know, you can just quickly throw skill points into your abilities, experiment a little bit while you're leveling, and then maybe once you hit level 45, realize, oh, I don't really like what I did, so, you know, I'm going to reroll and actually, you know, use a guide to change my abilities or use my knowledge of what I've learned so far to, you know, create a build. So I think that's very good. You have to keep in mind it does expire, so you don't want to hold on to it. You want to make use of it if you think you need it. But if you buy a cash up one, that one does not expire. Um, the classes at launch are going to be Warrior, Ranger, Sorceress, Berserker, Valkyrie, Tamer, Wizard, and Witch. So I don't believe we have all of the um, classes, but there are the vast majority of them. Um, you can set filtering uh, as to what languages you want to be able to use um, for like region related chat. Um, on the American servers, it probably doesn't really mean that much, but if you're playing in Europe, this is incredibly useful. So it's quite nice that they did that so that you can communicate with people that speak the language that you know best. Um, two servers each region for closed beta, 10 total channels, but that's just for beta. So. Okay, 10 possible, so 4 by default and 6 as overflow, so obviously, you know, the number of servers is just for beta, it's going to be a lot higher at launch, um, but it seems like they've developed sort of an overflow system, and they're going with two servers, so it's quite likely that they might not be going with mega servers for launch, so that's quite interesting to see, but we'll have to wait and see, they might still be going with mega servers. Now, now we're going to look at the cash shop. Um, there are gameplay changes lower below, but the cash shop is in chronological order, so we'll go through that first. Um, now, the price in pearls, I believe um, 100 pearls is $1, so if it's 50 pearls, it's 50 cents. So one pearl equals one you know, cent in US dollars. Um, and a euro is, so it's about maybe, let me pull up an exchange rate, one USD to a euro. So it's about... Uh, Nine tenths of a so a hundred pearls is about um, I think nine tenths of a euro unless they adjust the exchange rate accordingly. Um, we'll have to wait and see. So you can get a die box of uh, multiple types for fifty cents, um, and I guess there's like bundles of three that you can get for a dollar and twenty cents. And then you know fifty cents if you want to bleach it and remove a die to what it normally looks like in case you dye something and realize it looks like crap. I'm not quite sure if there's a preview. Um, I really like what they're doing here with the customization. So you can it's like eight dollars to change your character's appearance. And uh, but what you can also do is if you pay just two dollars more, uh, ten dollars for a thirty day appearance change ticket. You can just change your character's appearance whenever you like, as much as you want for a month. So it's kind of like a $10 a month subscription to change the way your character looks. Um, I'm pretty sure most people wouldn't be interested in this, but there's some people that you know are willing to spend money that just want to constantly change their character and make them look funny. So this could certainly be a very interesting thing that they're selling. Um, but like if you realize you just want to change your character once, you can still just spend $8. Um, or if you want to change two characters, this is also a better value. So just something to consider if you ever want to change your character's appearance. Um, now for inventory and weight. Um, for those of you that haven't played Black Desert, um, in addition to inventory slots, um, there's also limitations at, as, in regards to physical weight. And individual items have 
a certain amount of weight to them, and that includes silver, which is the currency of Black Desert that you carry on you. So you generally want to store your silver in a warehouse because you can access that when you go to the auction house and whatnot. But anyways, so they're going to sell stuff in the cash shop to expand your inventory and weight. Um, this is also available through the miles system, which is basically where you get, I think, 100 so-called miles for logging in each day, and that's the only way to get them. So you can still earn these just from logging in daily, and I think you can also level it up by, um, the inventory you can rank up by doing quests, and the weight limit you can rank up by, uh, leveling your character's strength through carrying heavy objects and walking around. Um, storage. So um, the way storage works in Black Desert is it's local to each region generally. So they have upgrades for each region where you can increase the amount of slots in storage. So um, you can buy like one slot for like 50 cents, four slots for $1.70, and eight for three dollars. So obviously buying more is a better value. I think most people would be probably be buying the eight slot storage unless you know they quickly need like one more slot for some reason but generally you'd go with the eight slots um they have that for each region um pet related so there's like pets that pick up loot as you kill monsters and these are really nice to have because black desert is a very grindy game you're gonna go up and you're gonna group like 10 monsters and you're just gonna slash them all down and the difficulty with that is you know, it's kind of annoying to have to go to every single monster and pick up the loot because they drop a lot of just random loot that a lot of it is just junk, but you sell it to NPCs for gold. Um, so they're very nice to have, and it looks like they're about $9 a piece. Um, and there's $11 one as well. So these are all loot mounts. And then at the bottom, you I guess you can have a cat for your house. Hmm, looks like a translation error. Pointed ears, cat house. I'm pretty sure they mean house cat. Yeah. Hopefully they'll fix that just for... Because it drives some people crazy. So yeah, $4 for just a cat that you place inside your house in Black Desert. I guess it'll just roam around. Um, I'm not quite sure how the feeding system for pets work, but... Apparently you can increase the pet's fullness by 30. I don't know if you can, like... Buy, like, make food in-game from, like, farming... Not really sure about that. Um, they also have a... Or actually, no. I, I'm an idiot. Apparently, they actually have like a dog house or a cat house that... Uh, that I guess it'll just... You know, like an actual house for the dog. I'm just pretty stupid. Disregard that. It's a decoration. Um, horse equipment. So... You can decorate your horse. Um, I think it's just cosmetic to make your horse look cooler, and that ranges from anywhere from like $5 to $20. So it gets pretty expensive. I'm not sure how I feel about that, but on the expensive end, more horse related items. Um, resetting horse skills. Um, this kind of bothers me. So it's RNG, which is another annoying thing. You keep resetting until you get the skill you want. And the thing about horses in Black Desert is they kind of get a random skill when you, like, level them up. And certain skills are worth a ridiculous amount of silver. So one of the things they do with Black Desert is there's no player-to-player -player trade. You can't sell cash shops items on the marketplace. And so the reason they did that is people were complaining, oh, if you can sell cash shop items on the marketplace, then you could just get unlimited silver with money. And then it would be pay to win because, you know, you can use that silver to enchant your gear and it's just not fair. But the problem I see with this is people could use this ticket to constantly reset horse skills until they get a super rare skill and then sell that horse on the market for a huge profit. So if you, unless there's like some kind of a limit on these tickets, I could see people using a lot of these tickets to, you know, buy up cheap horses with crap skills, reroll the skill until they get something valuable, sell that horse for a ton of silver and just profit that way. So... I'm hoping there's something I misunderstand here, but this item is pretty concerning. Um, horse flutes to call your horse from further away, because you, in case you don't know, you park your horse a lot when you go grinding, and you can call it to you in case you need it to come to you, and the whistle increases that range, so it's it's just a little nice convenience item. It's not that important, but it's a uh, dollar for a day, three dollars for a week, and seven dollars for a month. Um, 
I honestly think it's don't worth it. It's not worth it unless you have a lot of money to spend on the game, but... Oh, wait, there's a $15 permanent one. Alright, yeah, that might be worth it. I don't agree on the subscription-based ones, though. If you're gonna get the horse whistle, get the permanent one. It's just... It's a bit more, but I mean... You're gonna spend more in the long run if you just go with the temporary ones. Um, reset the revival count to, of your ride to zero. Um, I think the way it's set up is uh, when your horse dies, it costs money to revive it, and the more it's the more times it's died, the more it costs to revive it, and this resets it to zero. So I'm not quite sure how bad that gets, but it's mildly concerning. Okay. A horse breeding reset. Uh, this will take a bit of time to explain. Basically, you can breed horses in this game, and I think uh, the horses can only be bred once or twice, depending on their gender. Um, but this ticket allows you, I guess, to reset that so you can do it one or two more times, but you can only use these tickets once or twice per horse. So it gives, like, a bit of advantage. You can make a bit of money by, you know, being able to breed a bit more, so you can get a bit of silver off this item, but it's not really unlimited. But, I do think that this makes the point false that you can't make silver off of, these cash off of the cash shop, because a lot of these items, you can profit just by using them and selling stuff on the marketplace. So, I think that whole point is just completely gone. This, this cash shop is nothing like what we saw from the original announcement. Um, but it's, it's not terrible, but it's not the best either. It's, it's not the end of the world, but it's not the best. Anyway, moving on. Um, Mount Brand Removal Spellstone. Removes the brand of horse so it can be traded. Um, I'm not quite sure about this, but I guess maybe you have to spend money on the cash shop to be able to trade a horse. That is a bit concerning. I don't know. Horse skill training ticket. You can request horse training to be to a stable keeper when the horse is checked in the stable. I'm guessing this is to... I'm not quite sure how that works. Something with horse skills. Um, so basically a lot of cool looking furniture sets for your house. Um, you can get a full set for like 25 bucks. You can just get like a cheap individual part for like 2 or $3. So I guess you have the sets, which are like a lot of pieces all in a combo. Or you can buy the individual pieces for like 2 to $4, which... It's not that expensive, but... I mean... I don't know, spending $25 just for a virtual table set, that's a little bit on the high end. So, I don't know. Anyway, this is basically the types of furniture they sell in the cash shop. You can look through it at the link I'll post in the description. I'm not going to go over the full list, so I can move on. Okay, functional, so items that do things. Um, partial combat skill reset. Um, basically, you reset one combo skill to get your skill points back, or if you want to like change the direction... So, like, you put, if you put something into one skill you don't really want anymore, you know, use that. Whereas, if you think your complete, you know, skill build is just terrible, you would buy the all combat skill reset. Um, you can also get these with miles, which are the stuff you earn in games. So, it's not really a bit that big of a deal. I don't really have much of an issue with it. I don't think this is much of a problem. Now, what c might concern me is the Alien's tier. And what they do is they allow you to revive immediately after dying at 10% health. Now, the detail I want to know is if these work when you're killed in PvP. Because for PvE, player versus environment, I don't see them being an issue. You know, you die to a monster and, you know, you use it. It's no big deal if you just want it so you don't have to run back. No problem, it's a nice convenience item. But if it works in PvP, especially sieges, then I see these being a huge issue. I mean, you know, you're in a siege, you know, if, like you just barely, you know, you run into the back line as melee in a siege, you take out someone that's ranged, and then you die. Like, you're like, you might think worth, but then they use one of these things, they get back to 10% health, you know, back up a bit, chuck a few potions, and get back into the fight. That could be a huge issue. So I hope to God they don't work in PvP, or at the very least, not in sieges, but we'll have to wait and see or find out. Um, mount name, change ticket, change the name of your mount, no problem, you know, it's just a name, it doesn't really affect gameplay, no problem. Um, character slot expansions, um, 
basically, it's, you know, the amount of characters you can have, self-explanatory. You can get those, you can earn them through miles, but they're really expensive. Um, it's about 50 days of logging in just for a single character slot expansion, earning it that way. So, it's kind of annoying, but, you know, it's not that bad. It's understandable. Um, Black Spirit Essence, um, you can put crystals on items that basically, um, you know, enhance its stats and they break on death. So basically what you'd use it for is if you, you know, you have crystals on one item and say you get a new item that you want to use instead, you can take the crystals off if they're valuable. Not really that big of a deal because you can just get a new crystal instead, but, you know, it's a little bit, if you want to save silver, it can be useful in some cases. Costumes. Um, once again, um, there's a lot of costumes of different kinds. I'm not going to go through them all, but I'm going to look through the general prices. Um, 22 Wow, $32 for a weapon and costume set. That's pretty expensive. And then individual pieces are like 4 to $12, depending on where they're located. Um, the other thing I don't like is they have what they call luck wear, and... I think I believe that increases drop rates, so or like the chance of getting like rare loot. So I don't really like that, considering it's a buy-to-play game. But yeah, that's mildly concerning, but not that huge of a deal. But thirty-two dollars for a costume is relatively expensive. So, but I mean, they have every right to make a costume expensive if since they're only cosmetic. If you don't like the prices, don't buy them because if they realize they're not selling very well. Maybe they'll realize that the prices are too high, but quite too often I see people complain that a costume is too expensive, and then they proceed to buy it anyway, and if you're buying it anyway, you're only supporting the high prices, so I mean, it is what it is. Um, but yeah, up to $32 for a full costume set, and then you have like, like underwear that increases luck, so that... Is a little bit concerning, but not that huge of a deal. It just, you know, maybe you get a bit more loot. It's not pay to win, but it's a bit of advantage. Um, accessories. Um, okay, this needs a bit of explanation. Um, basically, these accessories increase the chance of getting a b better monster knowledge. And let me just explain real quick how the monster knowledge system works. Basically, the first time you fight a monster, you don't see their HP, and once you get knowledge of them, you can see how much HP they have, and you also get a grade that is completely random. You get either a C, a B, an A, an A+, or an S. And the higher your rank, the more damage you do to the monster, and um, if you get an S rank, then you also get a better chance at rare loot from them. So... Or maybe it's more loot. But anyway, if you don't like the rating you get, like if you get a C or a B and you want at least an A on a monster because it's a monster you grind a lot, you can re-roll it by going to an NPC in Kelfion. And then you can just keep trying to get knowledge over and over until you get a rating you want. It's a lot of RNG. It's a lot of grind. But this accessory increases the chances of you know getting a higher rating, like maybe like an A or an S. So, I mean, it makes the grind a bit easier for $5, um, and there's, you, I think you need it specifically for the character you're using. So, just keep that in mind, um, so $5 to increase uh, chance of getting better knowledge. Um, that's basically what it is. I'm not sure what these other accessories are, I don't know if they're cosmetic, but that's what they are. Anyway, um, loyalty, so the I, this is also what they call their mileage shop. I guess they changed it to loyalty to be more um, clear as to what it actually is. Um, basically, you get 100 loyalty points for logging in each day. So basically a daily reward for logging in. And there's no other way to get loyalty points at this time. I mean, maybe they'll do it for events, but for now it's just 100 loyalty points each day you log in. So... A lot of these are items that are not in the cash shop because they feel they're too powerful, like HP increase skulls, or scrolls. They would not sell those in the cash shop because people would complain, but they're sold in a loyalty shop, which is not cash related at all. So they aren't really a problem because, you know, you can get them just by playing. Um, 
So the Alien's Tears that I were talking about earlier, they're in the Loyalty Shop, but I mean, they're five days worth of login, so it's not like you get a sufficient amount of them. They have Boss Summon Scrolls, which you can use to summon bosses that you kill for loot. Um, EXP Boost, 10% really isn't that much, but Black Desert is a lot about grinding for EXP, so it could still be useful. Um, especially if you just want to go on a one-hour grind session, I mean... Every little bit helps. Um, vigor points, it's a bit like the um, the labor system in Arc Age, but is not as stupid. Like, not everything uses vigor. It's only crafting and gathering that uses vigor. It's not like Arc Age, where everything you do uses, like, labor or vigor. So it's not really a big deal. It's not BS like Arc Age. But you can recover a bit of vigor for once a day for 15 points. Um... Summon scrolls, um, horse skill deletion ticket, um, I don't know if that allows you to reroll it, I'm not quite sure how that works, it's different than the reset ticket, so you have combat skill resets, you have, uh, the storage I was talking about earlier, five days worth of login gives you one extra slot, um, weight increases that you saw earlier in the cash shop, they're, for, they're available for loyalty too, Weight limit increases, inventory, all of that. Character slots. Now these take 50 days of logging in to get a single character slot. So it is a lot to get character slots. I think a lot of people are probably going to want to just buy character slots in the cash shop if they don't get them through loyalty because it just takes so long to get a character slot. I mean, that's almost two months and you're sacrificing all this other great stuff you could be getting like combat exp or if you want maximum ex hp you know for the best power and sieges or you know maybe you just want dice because you care about looks you want the summon scrolls any of that you know you're sacrificing a lot by getting the character slot through loyalty so i mean it's probably better to get through the cash shop if you can afford it um all right moving on um Disregard this, the level cap for closed bid is 55, but I'm pretty sure for launch there won't be a cap. Um, basically the way Black Desert works is they're what they call a soft cap. You hit 50 and then from there the XP gain gets worse and worse and worse. And eventually it just gets so long to level that you'll basically never level up. And that's around level 55 at launch, so... But there, I don't think there's an actual like concrete level cap that you literally cannot go past. Um, PvP becomes enabled at level 45, so before 45 you can't be ganked, so you're safe until 45, um, so you know, you don't have to worry about level 50s, you know, ganking you and you're trying to level up, at least not until 45, then PvP goes on and all that goes, you gotta deal with all that, so you're safe until then, so if you're a fisherman, who knows, maybe you wanna get to like level 40 or so and then just fish, because I mean, at least then you can't be ganked while fishing. Um, Guild Wars, you can have six Guild Wars at a time, cost 200 sil silver, you can look that up later, there's plenty of guys on YouTube. What I want to go through is the Karma system though, because they are changing that for us. Um, if you look on their forums, they announced a potential bounty system and revamped Karma system, system that they wanted to make for us. And it looks like they kind of went through it halfway, they didn't do everything they said they would do, but they made a lot of the changes, and the, basically the way it works now is... For those of you that are unfamiliar with the karma system, basically, if you gank someone, you lose karma. And depending on how much karma they have, um, it affects how much karma you lose. So if you gank someone with negative karma, you don't lose any karma at all with their new system. But if you gank someone with positive karma or neutral karma, like zero, then you lose a lot of karma. And the lower the karma, the more punishments. For example... You can lose enchant levels if your karma is negative. So if you're going to be the kind of person that goes around ganking people, you are risking, you know, losing enchants if you mess up in PvE and die. So just keep that in mind if you want to be a person that ganks someone. You know, you get that nice plus 15 weapon. You know, that can go down to plus 14 if you die in PvE by mistake. So just keep that in mind. And then some towns might... The guards in towns will attack you if your karma is negative, so you get punished pretty hard for having 
negative karma. And the way you get karma back, say, you know, you lose a lot of karma for killing people and you realize, you know, you want to change your ways. Uh, killing monsters regenerates karma and it is a huge grind. You probably have to grind for like dozens of hours to get from, you know, the bottom karma of negative a million back to uh, 300,000. Anyways, moving on. It's about it. Visual issues with helmets. Uh, just known issues in general. Um, but that's basically it. Um, this is the information you have thus far. I hope this video helps. Um, looking forward to playing in the closed beta. I might make some videos from that as well. Subscribe if you're interested in more, etc. Et uh, thanks for watching.